Continuing our look now at the best in children's television. This morning, the new kid, or dinosaur on the block. So the big purple reptile that kids can't resist. The big purple dinosaur. <laughs> It teaches about love, and, and it just kind of like soothes the kids. And always, there's that signature song. Here we are. Welcome, Barney fans. I'm looking right at you because I am also looking at Carrie Stinson, host of Purple Tales podcast number five. How are you, Nancy? I am fine, Carrie. How are you? Oh, I'm so great. Isn't this fun? It is so much fun. And ever, I love the opening and seeing all of that Barney stuff. I mean, so we have you're in one of those pictures, too, I, aren't you? I As am. yourself. Yes, Mr. Barnes. See, Mr. Mr. Barnes. Barnes. And can you name the three people, like the first anchor and then the second anchor and then the voice that we hear? I'd have to listen it again, but yes, because I know Katie Couric, Couric and Brian. And then, no, Katie Couric and then Dan Rather. Dan Rather, and then. And then David Letterman. That's oh, is Letterman's it? voice. Is it? Absolutely, because I remember um, when Barney started in North Texas, where mm -hmm. it was created, yes. doing radio and television stories on that, not knowing that a few years later, right. <laughs> we would still be here talking yes. Barney. So I have a question for you. Yes. So are you starting to feel the Barney magic? You know, I am, because every time I hear the song, I, those three notes, and right. I, it's in my head, and I can't get out of it, and I am, I am becoming a believer. I mean, we've only known each other a couple of months, maybe, yeah, yeah. Um, but the fun thing about all this is why you're even doing this. Now, our executive producer, Chris Kraft, is not here today, so we can talk about him. Right. Okay? <laughs> yes. So, how did, how, did, how did this actually come to be, just to kind of remind everybody? It just came from the fact that... This is something I've been so proud of, and it's been such an important part of my life, but not something that I've really talked about. I've kind of always kept it to myself. Um, and with the Barney people, I mean, I've, I've stayed in touch with Barney friends. Um, Chris and I have been friends now for, for years, but at that time of year. And uh, he has a, a beautiful Nora, Nora Jane, his uh, grandbaby, and was watching a Barney episode and saw the credits, Carrie Stinson, and he had his wife stop took a picture <laughs> and sent it to me and said, were you Barney? And but I think he, the way he says it is, dude, yeah. were you Barney? I think there was dude that was in, it was in that. And oh, I was I like, it. yes. And then it was a lot of text messages after that. I too have been watching Barney episodes and I love seeing your name <laughs> and the names of the guests that we've had and that we know are gonna be coming on. It's so exciting. We've got so many fun people coming up. Just get ready. You're about to go on a, on a heck of a journey. And, and you're hearing from people that maybe you haven't heard from in a while? 20 years, some people that I haven't heard from. And it's funny because then what they do is they send me an old picture and it just, the memories come flowing back. Well, I have a, I have this really nice little note from okay. one of our YouTube followers. Oh, great. That I, if you, I hope Alexis doesn't mind. Alexis Grayson, she says she grew up watching the show that she's 23 years old okay. now. And she still has her Barney plushies. Wow. Now, those are... Yeah, the, the little Barney plush dolls. Yeah. Uh, well, so I wrote her back and I said, we're doing this for you, obviously. And I said, send us some send us some pictures of you and the plushies. We'd love to see them that you'd love to... We're talking pictures now. Right. And um, she also said she'd love to see the Backyard Gang reunion. So I said, you never know. Yeah. Fingers crossed. And then she wrote back. This is what I love. Oh, my God. That would be awesome. OMG. She's right. 23. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Alexis. Um, oh my God, that would be awesome. I'm not embarrassed to admit that I love you song mm -hmm. was and surprisingly still is my lullaby. I sing it once in a while if I'm feeling down or scared about something. Yeah. I mean, that just, that, I mean, that makes my heart swell to hear that. Yeah, that's the Bernie magic right there. That, I mean, it does for me too every time. The, the memories that flow. Well, it's incredible. And this also, I also I, I keep Googling Barney and I get uh -huh. all this research. I'm having sure. more fun with this. <laughs> so this was um, from a, 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 an a on-site, uh, you know, a web thing on-site yeah. yeah. and called Ladders. And okay. so this is quoting a guy named Alex Korb, a postdoctoral research in neuroscience okay. at UCLA. Uh -huh. Okay, smart guy, yes. right? So he's saying, um, Alex has some great suggestions for simple things you can do to feel happier all the time. Right. Okay. Okay. 
listen to music from the happiest time in your life. This doctorate says musical affects the brain in an interesting way to remind you of places you have listened to it before. Were you happiest in college? Play the music you loved then and it can transport you to that happier place and boost your mood. He goes on and, and is very specific. And then this writer says, I hope, and so we don't like this writer now, okay. because he said, I hope you weren't happiest in elementary school because it's going to be weird if you're playing the Barney theme song around your house. <laughs> so Alexis, I think you need to find this guy, track him down. I'm kidding. Don't, I know things get right, weird right, on the right, internet. Right, I'm kidding, right. kidding, kidding. But I mean, you know, whatever makes you feel good and that's the music, isn't it? Oh, it absolutely. It absolutely, well, you've seen the last couple of weeks I've started dancing and singing <laughs> and who knows what's gonna happen this week, so. Who know, what is gonna happen this week, Carrie? Yeah, if, I'm gonna tell you, hold on one second. Okay. I gotta tell you a story I had today, talking okay. about music. Okay. So I do photography for different um, musicians, and I was with one today, Shake Anderson. Unbelievable soul artist, if you get a like chance. Like the name. Check out, check out Shake Anderson. And we were, he, we ended up meeting another musician. Uh, Andy Timmons is his name. He's an amazing guitar player. Okay. Um, he's done all kinds of different um, uh, albums and solo projects and been a musician for a long time. And he found out that I was Barney, and he said, "Oh, I played on a Barney." So he actually oh, really? was, yeah, he was actually um, part of one of the Barney soundtracks, and play. He was he started playing "Coming Around the Mountain" right there, and and mimicking the Barney voice. So the the small world, it is that a small you see world. Is amazing. It really is. Well, and it's funny because you are hearing from all of your coworkers, yes. you know, inside the costumes, yes. outside yes. the roadies, everyone. Yes. And I'm telling people about Purple Tales podcast. Right. And so a friend of mine, I said, oh, you know, were you, are you a fan of Barney's? And she's like in her late 20s. Sure. Emily, she's in the security business okay. now. And she said, oh my God, I love Barney. She goes, my favorite was Barney's birthday. And she goes, I think I remember it was, I, it was orange and white. It was uh -huh. orange and white. And so she sends me a picture of the VHS tape. Yes. It's orange and white, Barney's birthday. <laughs> she said she watched it. She found it on YouTube, right. I guess, because sure. no, who has a VCR anymore? Mm -hmm. And she found it on YouTube and said, it all came back. She started singing the song. She remembered the words mm -hmm. and she called her mom because yeah. it just made her feel like a kid again. And she was mad, had been mad at her mom for giving her Barney plushie to her cousin. <laughs> right. So I'm thinking now all is forgiven, Mrs. It's, Oliver. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. it sounds so I know. Like it. That's it's, great. It's so much fun. Well, you know, we've been talking about music. Okay. But we're going to talk about the words now. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. The words of Barney. That's right. Because our guest today. Okay. Um, was the head writer for Barney from the TV shows, the stage shows, the movie. For years and years, he was with us, and it's Steve White. Without further ado, thank you so much Hi for there. being with us, Steve Thank you guys White. so much for having me in here today. So as we're talking about this and hearing our stories, what goes through your head? Uh, I'm sitting over here just grinning like, a, like an idiot <laughs> listening to these stories because, because I, I relate to this so much. Uh, the... And it was funny, as you're reading the quote from the person, well, I hope that it wasn't the, the music of Barney that you were... <laughs> because, because, see, that's one of the things I'm keenly aware of from the writing standpoint. There was always this clash between those who just loved Barney and those who wanted to go after him. Uh, and, and so that's something that we, sure. we've always had to deal with. But, but, but fortunately, I, I, I think that the animosity toward Barney has faded over the years but as people look look back at the love they had mm -hmm. uh i think that's still with us and so so i think that's terrific and i and Absolutely. i love what you guys are doing with the podcast oh thank you when did you to me let's talk a little bit about that oh my goodness it's been a long while yeah uh, it, it has at, at this point because because i was there well basically i joined after the first run of six home videos okay uh, so i i came on board to, to help start writing the the shows for pbs i wrote the first pbs episode yeah and i was doing birthday parties which was before that so i was actually doing that in the promotions when they started doing the tv shows and then i did the promotions for five years and then the tours which yeah and and i'm uh, you've, you've reminded me 
I've been thinking about all of this stuff for the last week, and so so many stories. <laughs> right, the birthday parties. Yeah, Barney started in such a humble fashion that in the early days you could get a licensed Barney costume yes. and a tape cassette. Remember tape cassettes, kids? Uh, <laughs> uh, of 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 a little fifteen minute Barney birthday show. Yeah, and I would go all over the town. Y- yeah, and and I think I may have been the last guy to legally rent that costume. Uh, uh, because you were in the costume yeah, yourself, which 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 was actually great. Uh, <laughs> uh, here, I was I was writing at the time, and so I was I was part of the show. But but uh, a little five year old neighbor was having a birthday party, and oh gosh, would would you be willing to? I thought, sure, yeah, that'd be great. I, you know, that's fine. I put on that costume. I went over, and I'm thinking, how hard is it to to dance for 15 minutes? <laughs> right. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. Uh, I'm I'm over there. I'm dancing. I'm trying to do the the spins and right. everything else. And I, I I'm trying to look out the the mouth, and and my heart's thudding away. The kids are buying it, so that's wonderful. But I'm thinking, you know, I haven't I haven't led a perfect life, but I think if I drop dead in this costume, that gets you right through the the pearly gates. It's like, well, he uh, you know he was. He, he, he he blew a fuse, but he was dancing for the kids. We got we got to cut him a little slack for that. So, but but that also was an important experience for me, particularly when writing the live shows. Mm-hmm. That I would try to structure them in such a way that I wouldn't kill any of the performers. Uh, I I took it as a personal challenge to make sure none of you flopped over dead on the stage. See, did you know that? That I mean, that you had someone really looking out for you? I, I actually did know that. <laughs> and it was important because what you're not understanding without going too much into this is that when we're talking, there's not a whole lot of breathing going on. Uh-uh. Yeah. To make that mouth move involves um, me not being able to breathe, basically. Yeah. So through my nose, basically. And so you're catching air and you're having to do that. So those long talks, <laughs> you're like, we're gonna have to talk to Steve about that later because uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, he yeah. must be mad at me. When some he some he of the longer together. monologues, you know. Yes. Well, that's right. You were an actor. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. How did you get the job with the gig? You're you're. I mean, what were you doing before you started writing for Barney? It, it, here, here, are the, the as as quickly as I can. Way way back when. Uh, I, I lived in Indiana, Bloomington, Indiana, and uh, I did uh, stand-up comedy there. Uh, and I'm sure you both recognize my name from that. No, nobody. <laughs> it, it went nowhere. But I was doing stand-up comedy and I also had, working in radio. I had no idea you did yeah, stand-up comedy. Yeah. So, uh, and, and then working in radio, uh, writing and producing commercials and, and doing voices and things like that. So I, I, I love that. Uh, so, so that was great fun. That brought me to Texas, which is a great radio market. Right. And so I was, I was doing radio ads for agencies here in town. Uh, that got me uh, through. The, one of the agencies I was working for handled the Chuck E. Cheese mm-hmm. account, and they needed a new writer to write shows for their robotic characters. It's basically uh, a, a vaudeville for kids. <laughs> and they said, well, Steve's nuts, you know, he, uh, he'd be just the guy for this job. So I started writing for Chuck E. Cheese uh, and, and doing their shows. We would do about four shows a year, and I was doing this for years. And one of the, uh, the people I worked with in the audio sessions when we were recording was Bob West. Who was, and you've been seeing the name. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah he the was voice. The, he was the voice, the original voice. And we have a picture up of this is the Chuck E. Cheese. Was that the Chuck E. Cheese original thing we voice. just saw? The, right? Yeah. That, the, 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 they're, they are Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Hi, boys and girls. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's, 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 it's good fun. Uh, and and uh, Bob West was, uh, uh, we, can, we can see down there on the end, the dog with the guitar. Uh, or is it a banjo? I can't tell. But looks that, like a ukulele. Yeah, it's a little teeny so tiny. Yeah, yeah, Jasper, <laughs> Jasper P. Jowls. Okay. Jasper T. Jowls. I'm sorry. And Pasquale, the, uh, yes. the pizza cook on the end. Bob West was both of those characters. And so uh, we would we would get together about four times a year to, uh-huh. to record a, a major show. And on one of those uh, occasions when we got together, I asked Bob casually, what, what have you been up to? And he says, well, I just did this thing where we shot several videos for these school teacher moms with a, with, with a dinosaur character. <laughs> I said, really, is that gonna go anywhere? And he says, no. Uh, <laughs> the first oh, ones wow. were a little rough, right. okay? Uh, but but uh, 
who who knew? But I thought, well, that sounds more or less up my alley, and it's local here. So and those were the ones with Sandy Duncan. Yes, the ones with Sandy Duncan. Yeah, yeah. When when Barney looked and sounded very very differently. Yes. Uh, but but so I wrote to uh, to Cheryl Leach to to say, hey, look, I'm a guy who works with Bob West. Uh, I, I I do stuff for kids. I do comedy. I do music. Uh, so uh, if if there's ever a need, here I am, and I heard nothing back. Uh, <laughs> then then I saw a newspaper article that said said uh, that the Barney character had been picked up for a PBS series, and I thought to myself, well, that ship has sailed without me. So, uh, uh-huh. but but so I got back in touch, and Cheryl Cheryl remembered me and said, no, we were going to get in touch with you, and so I went in and I, I interviewed for the job. Uh, and in point of fact, they they needed a lot of writers. They needed six writers. They interviewed, I think, thirty writers because because none of the writers who had been on the show prior were returning. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Indeed. <laughs> hmm. Okay. We don't. Yeah. For, we don't need to go there, that's right? For other guests <laughs> yeah. to share at okay. a later date. But uh, <laughs> but so they they interviewed like thirty people and and then they they hired myself and and my very good friend Mark Bernthal. Uh, we were the only two writers for the first season, and and I, that was how many episodes? Uh, that that was thirty episodes and not much time to write them. Uh, when when we started. I think we would have have the initial meeting, pitch the ideas, write the script, uh, two uh, uh, revisions, and we had six days to do that, and then we had to start the next one because wow. otherwise we just wouldn't wouldn't make it. First Barney lesson: never take no for an answer. Be persistent. D- yeah, right. It's but, a very common story because it happened to me too. The same thing happened to me. What's that? Uh, with the birthday parties. Sloan Coleman, yes, was the she was doing sure. the birthday parties, okay. and said, "I'll I'll call you," and she didn't, <laughs> and I thought the same thing, and I yeah. had to find her number, call her. She'd already hired someone else, mm-hmm. um, but that person took the first month off, so I filled in for the first month and and went from there, and then when I got the the um, promotional tour um, with Dennis DeShazer. Same and kind he of thing. Is the, he, the is, head, he is. He yeah. is. And by the way, he says hello. Oh, it, he, absolutely. Hey, hey, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was the same kind of thing. And I, I really think it was because it was so overwhelming for them. Mm-hmm. Things were happening so quick. All of a sudden, a TV show and promotions and this and this and this in a small group. It went crazy. And nobody, nobody was ready for the way it, it took off. Right. Second Barney lesson don't ever leave your job and go on vacation. You know, I mean, uh, y- think yeah, about it. Yeah. I mean, think with the, it, yeah, we wouldn't be here. It would have been a whole your, different your person. Your will stay warm and not necessarily Ex- because of you. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, <so>. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so you got the gig, Carrie's on the road, all these things are happening, but how in the heck do you write for, for kids? I mean, 18 months plus, 18 it's, to 3, 4? It was a really unique kind of a challenge because the, the, the shows, uh, people who remember seeing them, they look very simple. That was the idea. Simple enough that I was frequently asked, somebody writes those? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but actually, they they were very complex. There were a lot of layers because we, we, we uh, now un, unlike the, the first run of videos were, were pure entertainment. With the PBS show, we started adding uh, uh, age appropriate educational points, uh, which and it's funny because when you're, when you're dealing with kids as young as 18 months, the, the, the you, you, you educate them with things you show, the way you present the information, not just the words, and certainly not with long words, which <laughs> was a problem for writers. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, but the, the whole way the, the material is presented and all of that needed to more or less go into the script. Usually in a script, a writer, if, if you suggest, okay, the camera should look over here, or this person should do that, then, then you, get, you have to wear the bad writer hat because they don't like that in scripts. But with Barney, we had to be very specific because if, if we were saying, well, you know, an apple is red, uh, uh, then, <laughs> oh, I've been doing that for years. Uh, uh, it, it, we would instruct, be looking at the apple, close up on the apple at that moment so that the kids really would would get it. 
Uh, and so we had to be very specific about that kind of information uh, and, and just a, a, a lot of subtleties to the way the, the education was, was, was presented. And then tying it, the other thing that was a challenge, there were plenty of challenges, thanks. Uh, <laughs> we, was half of every show was, was music right. and, and, and dancing and things. But you couldn't let that just bring the action to a stop. Sure. Uh, you, you, so so in, in, uh, when, when I was originally hired, they said, you know, basically your job is going to be a carnival of segues. Just make smooth transitions to the songs. <laughs> and it's like, no, that doesn't actually add up to a show. Uh, uh, so, so I would have to write material that would be happening during the songs besides the, the choreography. Great choreography done by Penny Wilson. At the time, uh, Miss, Miss, Miss Penny. Penny. Miss, I know Penny. Miss, Miss Penny. Penny. I Miss love that. Penny. Yeah, and uh, uh, and and then and also try to make a, a cohesive show that used some songs people knew, some songs that would be new to the production, and present it all in a way that kids could understand. So it there was a lot going on. Well, on and then the what surface. about writing for the cast kids? The uh, in 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 some cases. Because they were varying ages. Yeah, yeah. And every time we'd have a summer break, you know, somebody would come back a foot taller, which was like, right? <laughs> uh, it, it would it would depend uh, on on once we got really deep into it. We things were happening so quickly. We knew we were going to have new cast members, uh, but we didn't know who they were at the point that I was writing, and so we had had a lot of scripts about. Boy A, girl B, uh, uh, and uh, and I'd uh, I'd like to point out that both boy A and girl B are, are famous now and uh, very successful. <laughs> but uh, uh, but 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 originally, at least, the the kids had their own distinct personalities, and we would write to that. I've got I've, I brought a cheat sheet, but I don't really need it. That I would have a list that this this character say say Michael he likes he likes science he's a natural leader so uh, specifically written for that child yeah yes his 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 parents might be divorced uh, uh, we 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 had, we had full but tiny little little biographies for each of the kids which would help inform how they would react to things you know are is this is this is this person a, a, a an inventor and problem solver uh is is it somebody who's who's little miss showbiz uh and so all of those things would go into writing specifically to the characters because that makes them more more fun more relatable and there had to be some kind of educational value to all this didn't it which yeah. might i mean i mean you're having fun but how did you maneuver that the it's and, and, and I should say, one of the things that really helped me with this was at the time I had a very young daughter. So I had just learned the language of communicating with a toddler, which is not all about language. Right. It's, it's, about, it's about body movement. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about facial interactions. It's about games. It's about surprise. It's about, the, pardon me, about the sounds <laughs> of, of words, uh, silly words, nonsense words. Such as? Uh, super de duper. Uh, that was mine. <clears throat> Actually, you people had been using that. it for a long time, but I was the first one to put it in the script. And then other people on the team slapped a trademark symbol after it. So yeah. Really and truly? They, they really did. Oh, that was his big, yeah, he would have this big jump with it. I mean, it was a... Oh, yeah, the flying 360. Well, I that, but I meant, I didn't know there was, that was trademarked. I, I'm, I'm not sure 100% it would stick in a court of law, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, but they had other people to handle that other than, oh, the, than, uh, than me. Oh. So, but, but, but so all of these were, were ways to communicate with kids and help teach them things. Now we, uh, we had uh, uh, in, in the first season, uh, it, well in every season thereafter, ed educators uh, who would help us, uh, the writers, they would create a little packet today. You know, this show is going to be about colors and shapes. Okay, cover the primary colors. Eh, if you're good, maybe a secondary color, but not beyond that. <laughs> right. You know, we can if shapes go circle, square, triangle. With you know, trapezoids, <laughs> not for 18 months old. So we would know that. Uh, uh, and and I, I should mention names: Marianne Dudko and Margie Larson were yes. the people who were doing our our research. And, and educating us so we would know how to communicate with that audience. Uh, and, and so we, we would work the educational material into to games 
uh, or, or songs or, or whatever. Uh, and, and in point of fact, here at the end of each episode, there was a, uh, a segment called Barney Says, and it had two purposes. One was to, to a little a little slush room, so if we ran a little short or something, we could tag it with 45 seconds of, of Barney saying what had gone on. But the principal reason that even existed was that the educational content was so subtle that parents or, or, or adults would not pick up on it, and they would not know we were doing anything other than dancing and flailing our arms for a half hour. Uh, so, so, so at the end, Barney would say, and today we learned that about these colors and about these letters, we learned this about, about when to cross the street and not. And he would repeat the things that had, had been in the show, but without being called out, adults might not even notice. True or false, is there really a Barney Bible? There is a Barney Bible, mm -hmm. and, and, and I wrote it. Which really seems more like I should have come down from a mountaintop with it. But it's, <laughs> I was going it, it to was, say something. It was like less that. official than that. Okay. And 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 longer. Uh, <laughs> there there were a lot of commandments in the Barney Bible. Uh, the the uh, the Barney Bible was a big thick book, and it it talked about the individual characters, how to write a script. Did you see the Barney Bible? Did you ever see it? I don't know that I saw. I definitely knew all about it. Yeah. I don't know that I, I saw. I came to your door with it. No. You wouldn't. <laughs> you wouldn't answer. <laughs> I don't know. I'm spreading the word about it. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, so how I can forget that moment? I'm not. Yeah. I'm not so, sure. So, so, oh. so yeah. It, it was the robe, but I think. It, well, 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 exactly. Well, and, and in fairness, there was thunder. So a yes. lot of people, oh, lot of people didn't okay. want to come to the door. Exactly. Uh, exactly. That was back in the day. The tablets, right? Uh, I'm, not, I'm, the tablet. not the tablets. Not the tablets. Not the tablet tablets. That's right. That's that's right. Right. But th there were some. You have. There was actually some cute little pictures. If we can, that you brought yes. some to yeah, the children. Yeah, yeah. These little. If you if you get us, look for us on There's YouTube. Kids. Yeah. These beautiful little faces. Now, what 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 did they have to do with Barney's Bible? This at, at the point uh, here, I was a writer for a long time. I was head writer for some of the time, uh, and when I was head writer and and produced the, the Barney Bible for the the incoming writers to teach them what to do. The picture, this picture of these kids was something I told them, no kidding, you take this picture right now and you put it on the wall above your computer and you look at them, you look at their eyes and you look at their faces and you always remember mm. that is our audience. If you're thinking of sneaking in a dirty joke, don't. Uh, if, if, if you're, if, 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 when you read the dialogue, if the lines are too complicated, if it's hard to understand, are these kids going to get it? Are these kids going to be laughing at, at a funny sound or a funny action, whatever? But really, for, for all the, the experts you could get, there's nothing better than just looking into the faces of these kids and thinking, is, th is this going to work for them? Because that was the whole that was the whole job for for all of us for for, for Carrie for me for the entire group making Barney we wanted to do what was right for those kids and and that cohesiveness is is that's that's that Barney magic that we're that's talking it. about you're gonna get it Nancy you're, you're gonna get it <laughs> there's no avoiding it now. oh no I, I, I know I'll tell you the other thing that was funny for me I would get so can you jump rope. Can you, the writers would come up with stuff. Yeah. And then I'd get a, can you, could you be on roller skates? Yeah. Would you jump in a pool? Would you, well, this is where that was. Yeah. Because, well, we wanted to have as much fun as we could, but at the same time, it would do us no good to say, oh, okay, uh, Carrie, we'd like you to, uh, to do a bungee jump and uh, just, just ask him, would that kill you a little at all? Or you know, is that okay? So, so no, but, but, but when there was a fun idea, it's like, can you do that? And, and, you know, uh, we would always be told I'll go for it. So, uh, oh, love doing that. What was the most difficult thing you I mean, you, cause I know you did everything, but was there one thing where you're like, whoa, Steve just wrote this and I, you know, is there something that you thought, you know what, I'm going to have to work on this a little bit? Well, they were nervous about the pool, me jumping in the pool. In, that, the, in the suit. In the suit. That one definitely made people nervous. Yeah. And the roller skating, I think people you were, look, I did. I did. People were a little nervous about me <laughs> skating around the, the park. Because yeah. obviously I can't see, I mean, you there's a trust thing going on, have, obviously. Well, uh, yeah. As I've been watching some of the episodes and so on, and one word just keeps coming in my head uh -huh. that seemed to be almost thematic and that's imagination use well, your imagination yeah. do that i mean it was never 
hey, we're gonna go, we're gonna go jump in the pool. No, right. use your imagination, and I'm on a desert island. I mean, whatever. I mean, it was sure. imagination. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That was that was the whole core of of what we were doing was to encourage kids to to use their imaginations and see things in ways they they otherwise might not. Well, Steve, where did it come from, Barney appearing? With uh, well, that, now that that actually uh, uh, that that precedes me uh, with with the first videos where the doll would would turn into uh, in, into the full size Barney. Yes. Now, according to legend, uh -huh. so 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 I don't know for sure <laughs> that that may have been somewhat inspired by the comic strip Calvin and Hobbes, in which you know the, the the Calvin had his his little toy tiger, but in his mind. He, he was big. Right. Now, I can't say for, for, sure. for absolute certain that's where it came from, but, you know, people talk. Uh, <laughs> so so, so uh, I, I, I don't know, but it, but it was a, a useful device. When you're, when you're ending the show, there's nothing better than your, the lead of the show turning into a doll to let people know, okay, well, it's over. Let's, let's go home. <laughs> we won't let that happen today. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep we'll, going we'll, here. Do you, right. have, do you have a favorite episode that you wrote? Oh my! There's a, there's a there's a a, a a bunch of them. Uh, what, one one that I've got a a a, 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 a lot of uh, here. I've 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 lost my words. It's a writer's terror. Uh, one but one that I liked very much early on was uh, uh, an episode about Mother Goose, uh, hmm. which was called Hong Kong, a goose on the loose. Because, you know, yeah, Honk. a lot of people think that was Shakespeare, but no, that was, <laughs> that was me. Uh, but, it, but it was just such fun because uh, uh, we, we had a wonderful actress, uh, Sandy Walper, who was playing Mother Goose. And the, the whole idea was, you know, the, we were going to do some nursery rhymes. And on the Mother Goose book, you see Mother Goose riding on the back of a giant goose. And I thought, man, wouldn't it be great if... Uh, not only her coming to life, but the goose comes to life. We got a giant goose running around the set. I'm talking a giant goose, an ostrich-sized goose, and 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 so the whole episode is about trying to help Mother Goose get her goose back, and that <laughs> that was huge. That's interesting fun for me because it, it gave us the opportunity to give the kids a lot of nursery rhyme type things to do, a lot of fun stuff there, a lot of a lot of color, and for me, one of the things that was special. Uh, about that was that for a writer it is a it is a dream come true literally to to have have a script in your mind <laughs> you you picture the scenes you, it's like okay uh, a giant goose sticks his head in door quacks twice everybody goes running but then later on i get to see it and i i see it performed in real life with uh you know great Great visuals back back in the beginning. Jess Nelson uh, was yeah. was doing the art direction. Later, Bob. Lavalle. No CGI. No, this was no CGI. <laughs> Not really much in the way of computers at all. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, but so it was such a thrill to see mm -hmm. all of this really come to life and and not just made three dimensional but better by the fact that we had the the the, the body talents we had the voice talents the performers the, the 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 camera guys the crew everybody was working to make it real and it's such an amazing feeling when it happened in your head first and now everybody can see it uh that i mean that was just great so and, and that's why i had a lot of experiences like that but that one in in particular so that's a great feeling to see your words yeah. come to life yeah how about when someone said hey what do you do and you said oh you know i write for barney what kind of reaction did you get to that usually a quizzical look <laughs> as as if a you know somebody writes that and b <laughs> why would you admit it <laughs> So, 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 so it, there we go. Yeah, we it got did, there. It didn't throw you the were there. there. You were actually on the set. I was right? actually you on got, the set. You, they, okay. they now when I would when I would be on the set, generally the, uh, the the guys on camera would yell "Writer on the set," which I took as an honorific, but it may have been a warning. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm not sure the, and, and because early early on uh, uh, again, the days before computers, kids. Uh, we had to deliver the scripts on a very regular basis in person, in paper. And so Mark Bernthal and I 
uh, would make a habit of delivering the scripts when we knew the catering would be done for the uh, <laughs> the, the cast and crew. So that, that, you know, it's like we're the writers, but we could kind of sneak to the end of the line and grab plates, and hopefully no one's the wiser. So... Uh, <laughs> So so uh, that that worked well. Speaking of scripts, you yes. have you have some white paper here that you have brought. Well, you, there's some it, other it, colors in there besides yeah, white. Let's see. Let's it, see. Let it, me, it was white. May once. I? May I? Can, you 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 may. May I? Ah. Uh, oh my gosh! Let, tell me about this. it. Says it says Barney and Friends show 220. Look at or 20, 210. I'm sorry. Okay, 210. And which would actually mean season two, episode ten. Okay. As a, as opposed to two hundred nine episodes oh, I coming gotcha. before Thank this. You. Okay, because that was me. No, look that's at, at me. The beginning. Look at me. I'm three. Written by Stephen White. And do you see the date? Wait, on, listen. Do you see the date can, on that? Can you hear? I mean, this is old paper. It is old paper. And there. Wait. There's some different colors in here. What's up with that? Why is there? Yeah, it's in all white. Basically, at the, at the point that I turn in a script, mm. uh, then then various people would make notes on it. Uh, uh, you, usually, just accolades. Uh, <laughs> oh. But but occasionally, a mild criticism, like uh, throw this out, uh, change this. Uh, but 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 after it would be oh. out of my hands. I've had then, a few of these in my hands over the. Yeah. See, uh, it looks it becomes you, doesn't it? He it, looks like he's he looks like he knows what he's doing. Oh, abs absolutely. This is that. Okay, what Stephen got me. Yeah. to this uh, this week was yeah. usually my uh, reaction he, to this. He'd, he'd, be, he'd be going through there and, he, and his, his eyes would fix on the word ring of fire. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he'd go, oh, this is going to this is going to hurt. But, oh, but, the, but the colored oh, pages would, would come in to show it, different different drafts. Sometimes there would be changes made for, to accommodate production uh, matters or, or what have you. And so the, they would put in different color pages to show which draft you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Uh, so mm. usually, mm. I like to think that every script was a rainbow by the time it made it to the <laughs> wow. to the kids. No, this is amazing. I mean, I this is this is just absolutely amazing. It's, it's crunchy. Just like it is it, crunchy, it's, and it's, it's like the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence. It's crunchy now. Mm. It's just that old and and just wow. That Thank you for bringing that in for sure. I love that. Oh yeah, you're um, very welcome. So. When did you realize then, if people were like, you're right, that's really written, when did you kind of have that moment where you're like, you know what, this, this, is, this is a good job, this, this is a career? Oh, well, it, it took a long time before I thought it might be a career. Uh, at, the, at the beginning, everybody who, who knew anything about television production said, this is not going to work. This is not, this is not possible. Uh, and, and so it was... It was a gig at the time, uh, but it kept going and going. And and I mean, initially at the at the end of season one, we we were canned. Uh, yeah. P PBS, we were. PBS was not in love with us mm. at the time. It was the audience that saved us. Uh, they, they they thought they, and the and the individual. I've talked to Dennis about this <laughs> and the individual stations. Yeah, because individually station they were the ratings were great. Yeah. Oh, the ratings were terrific. Yeah. There, there was plenty of positive feedback, and they realized, you know, we we really should stick with this. And so they brought us back and back and back and back and back. And so I, I, I'm I'm not sure I ever realized it was a career until it's starting to sink in <laughs> in now. As I, as I look back at 16 years of it, it's like, yeah, that was careerish, well, wasn't it? Yeah. Same feeling. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So then we stage production. Oh man, I, I I love I love the stage productions. Uh, they they were a tremendous challenge, but also uh, here here uh, uh, allow me allow me to wear my ego on my sleeve for a moment. When you write a TV script, a lot of people are going to be determining. Okay, the camera is going to do this shot, that shot, that shot, that shot. Uh, it's 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 out of the writer's hands, but when but when you do a live show, everything is happening on the stage. I get I get to say what's going to be looked at by by saying who's doing what, and so that that's fun. Uh, the other thing is is in writing a live show to make sure it can be essentially done in one take. That that. You're making it spectacular, yeah. but but you can't stop halfway through the performance. <laughs> so so you, 
I would have to build in ways to make sure things would go go right. And, and the, the the first the first live show I did was uh, the Radio City live at Radio City. Yes. And so, whose idea for the elephant was that? That was mine. Uh, <laughs> Yes, the, we had a live elephant we in had that a show. Live, kind of on, was it on the loose or something, or was that a real? I mean, it, it, it was a real elephant, and it, it just once it strolled by without the trainer. And I mean, that's. <laughs> but 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 seriously, who hasn't had that happen? Uh, Not in, in every Barney world. There's going to be one of the, those uh, elephants. The, the, the weird thing there was uh, was at the time when that project was coming up. Uh, I had never been to, to New York City. I had never seen. A, a, an actual big stage show. Have you been there before either? Oh nope. my goodness. And, and so okay. and so they they flew me out. They say, look, we, we're going to do this show and we're going to be doing it really soon. There's not enough time <laughs> to really do this, but we're doing it and we want to look good. So so uh, uh, the producers flew me out to New York and, and sent me to see a show at Radio City Music Hall. Well, this was their annual Christmas spectacular. Holy moly. This is... This, the theater is huge. There's there's stages and and side stages. There's tiers for the audience, and in their Christmas spectacular, you have people ice skating on stage. You have things rising up through the stage. You have you know a, a, a manger scene, and they've got sheep and cows and camels and elephants. And and I'm thinking, I have to fill this stage with Barney. I. I <laughs> I didn't know anything. I was terrified. Uh, so, so I'm looking at all of this, and, and so I wide-eyed returned to Texas, and the first thing I do is I go to our, our local library and take out every book I can find about how to stage a school play. Uh, to, to tell <laughs> For Radio me, City Musical. Yeah, yeah, it's like, okay, okay, quick. Okay, what's upstage? What's downstage? What's stage? Which is stage left? Which is stage right? What's a proscenium? What's a thrust? Uh, so I was, I, I was terrified. Uh, but, but at the same time, what a, what a thrill. Uh, and, and again, because we, there was a crunch for time, uh, besides writing, writing the script, uh, I, I drew out initial designs for the, the stage layout using my, my daughter's fruit scented markers. Uh, so <laughs> at, at the point we, uh, we presented that to the, the actual production designers, I, that was probably a first for them. It's like, mmm. <laughs> that smells good. <laughs> now this is the scene where, where, they're the, where we're doing a baseball thing and the trees smell like lime. So, uh, <laughs> But 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 so but wow. but but so it was it was it was a big show. I figured, well, what the heck? I'll use it. I'll use all the toys they've got, and uh, and uh, he and, did, and he did. Yeah, it was a it was a big show, and here I'm I'm going to give you my my favorite example of Barney magic. Okay. Uh, th this this show had so much stuff going on, it, things coming on, coming off. I mean, it it was it was giant. We never made it through a dress rehearsal intact. We didn't even come close. And uh, <laughs> I, 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 the, like the day before our first performance uh, for the public, I'm, I'm watching this thing. And, and I had mentioned there's, there's an elevator. It was, this, it was a huge platform that would drop 75 feet into the basement where you could put you could put on uh, another another prop, a bit of scenery, uh, performers mm -hmm. or something, and then raise raise back up. And I thought, well, that's great. I'll use that because that, that that looks fun. Well, okay. At the point we're rehearsing this thing and everybody's bumping into the scenery. Uh, <laughs> and you remember during, that, right? Oh, yeah. During during a oh, certain absolutely. during a certain scene, it's like, okay, well, everybody's looking over here, so we can lower that elevator, and and change stuff down there. Well, all of all of a sudden, I'm looking at this, and there's a, there's a a big black 75 foot deep abyss <laughs> in the middle of the stage, and 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 here we've we've got our 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 our, our dinosaurs in, in costumes who can barely see anyway, and a bunch of kids following them, and I'm I'm waiting for them to all go like lemmings into that <laughs> hole. <I'm> sorry, <laughs> and and I'm I'm up in the third tier, in in every sense of the word tier. Uh, <laughs> curled up in a fetal ball uh, uh, by myself thinking, I've killed the ball. 
I've killed them all. <laughs> so it was, it was, it was, it was complete oh. terror for me. Oh. And, and as I say, we never got through a, a, a dress rehearsal. The next day then, it opened up. The, the, the place was full. Uh, Barney comes out on stage. You never heard such a cheer. And, and the kids are, are, are holding up their little Barney dolls like, mm -hmm. like for a blessing. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and everything went great. And that was, we were all doing our best, but that was not us that made that happen. That was the kids that made that happen. That was the Barney magic mm -hmm. that actually made that work that night. And I've, I've, trust me, I've got goosebumps under here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it, it was an amazing, amazing experience and, and one of my favorites. Yeah, I, so I was the second Barney in that one. Okay. And the important you, Barney. Yeah. Well, sure. <laughs> yeah. And sure. you had me in a mop and, and bucket, if you remember. I, I, up I, in I, that second. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, just describe this, Carrie. So to do costume changes, to give each other breaks and, and all that. So Bar Barney's supposed, and I can kind of remember this, but Barney's supposed to run and jump over something and this and this and that. Yeah. And at the end, I, oh, he's chasing the winkster. Right. Is yes. what he was doing. Yeah. And all of a sudden he's got this and you hear him fall in a closet and he yeah. comes on stage and I've got a mop <laughs> and a bucket. Yeah. <laughs> on the, on the yes. And I'm way above the, I'm way up oh, in yeah, the balcony I, on this little stage. Oh, yeah. oh you were the audience. No, 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 no really. The, at, the, at Radio City, they've, they've got like little side stages yes. okay. so that, that, that you can have oh. a, a okay. performer, you, you know, you know, you can you can put Romeo on the stage and Juliet over right. here. Yeah. Or if you're really thinking, put a dinosaur with a mop and a bucket on his foot, <laughs> because if there's one thing I like to do is to to increase the danger for. Uh, obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Wow, that's great. But the other thing, Steve, yeah. you were also a character somewhere along the line in the just, Barney world. Just, just briefly, but they speak of it still. Oh, do they? Uh, and there might be pictures. There might there be pictures? There might might be pictures. Uh, in in the first season, uh, I played a, a character called Rainbow Beard. And here, let me give you a quick visual aid. Okay. Ooh. Uh oh. I love a guy who comes prepared. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Oh. Rainbow beard, the pirate, if you please. Oh, so, uh, look uh, at uh, that. The, uh, this and it was, fit, did you look just like I me? Mean, did you have the hair then and the beard? Because it looks perfect right now. I, and, and we've, oh, wait, we've got the, a picture there. Oh, wait. Uh, it's uh, a curly. What is that? What kind of a beard is that? Well, yeah, that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of arted up there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because, see, there's my big speech. Ahoy, me hearties, now listen well. And a special secret I will tell. If it's me treasure you want to discover, then follow the map of shapes and colors. It won't be gold or jewels you'll find, but a treasure of a different kind. It'll be an adventure if you dares to try it. <laughs> Sincerely yours, Rainbow Beard the Pirate. Yay! Thank you. Thank you lovely, had no idea lovely. what you were going to no, Thank you. Oh, my thank you. goodness. Yeah, yeah pretty, pretty proud of that. And so <laughs> that you were just on for how long? That was the, <laughs> what I just did was the whole length. <laughs> and uh, uh, we got we got a picture of me now. And if you look on the bench oh. here, here my my secondary. Oh my gosh! Uh -oh. Okay. This is this is the magical bottle that Rainbow Beard appeared out of. They pulled the pulled the plug, wow. and out I came in a in a, a genie smoke, bottle kind a of genie a genie yeah. bottle. And you wrote this? Did you write this for yourself? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Because that was it, back back in the in the first season. It was just nuts. It's like. You know, well, who's going to do the pirate? I'll do the pirate. Okay. I mean, it was like, you know, <laughs> we've got a bar. Let's put on a show. Uh, so, so yeah. So that was cool. And and at the point that I was writing it, mm. I had actually uh, visited a, a, a neighbor's garage sale. And the, I found this lovely Chianti bottle for $3. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's cool. It's got like a pirate map on it. And so at the point that this, you know, the Colors and Shapes episode came up, I thought, well, you know, you, 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 we're going to do a treasure hunt, so you need a pirate. Pirate, oh, where's the pirate going to come from? Ooh, what if he came out of a magic Chianti <laughs> bottle that, <laughs> that you got for three bucks at a garage sale? And, and oh, my. We were, we, were, we were winging it yeah. at, at, at the time. But so, so, yeah, that was great fun. So I got to be, I got to be Rainbow Beard. Oh, 
Well, you know, I know you also, you wrote some books that about Barney books. You wrote some of the songs. I mean, you did a lot with the, sh the, pro the show itself yeah, and, the, and the franchise. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I, would, I would do mostly, mostly re-lyrics for public domain songs, but also write some original songs. Mm -hmm. uh, so so I, would, I would do that. But then besides that, yes, I would write, I would write children's books. Mm -hmm. uh, we, did a, we did an audio series of uh, Barney telling bedtime stories. So I, I, I wrote and produced some of those. Uh, you know, the home, home videos, uh, movie, uh, the, 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 pretty much everything except actually words to go on the Barney diapers. Uh, <laughs> there were Barney diapers? There were absolutely Barney diapers. No, honest, uh, sure. really? And in fairness, they were absorbing. <laughs> they really were. They really were. So uh, uh, there was Barney everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. They, they, they in back in house they would refer to those as the Elvis years. He was everywhere. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. So, what do you use from your Barney years? Because yeah. I know you know Carrie's this successful photographer now and and doing quite well in that. You had obviously you had you had sort of narrow vision. Now that I think about it, yeah. as as Barney, you kind of had a narrow vision and you have to kind of do that with photography too, don't you? Yeah, it definitely allowed me to see the world differently. Okay. Above crowds and a mop and bucket. You, you, know, you, that you, kind you of stuff. were pretty much looking into a viewfinder the entire time, weren't <laughs> there you? you pretty much. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a great way to put it. Yeah. It's a great yeah. way to put it, yeah. So how did your Barney years translate to what you're doing now? And what are you doing now, Steve? Uh, s still writing, still still doing stuff for for kids uh less of it now because i'm older now uh but uh uh no i i i still write children's books here i've here i just happen to have a couple with me okay we've got alpha belch Cute. which is the story of the a to z story of animals who burp uh it's <laughs> it, it's it's also an app would you like me to demonstrate real quickly carrie sure absolutely we want to okay this work. wow <laughs> No, this is this is great, cute alpha belch, alpha belch. It surprisingly, hadn't been done. <laughs> uh, but see, we've got we've got an example here. Oh, so this there's actually a, an app for. Yeah. A is for aardvark. Two full of gas. And then the B kids, is for. Well, is that the next but, thing, or do no, I? But then you push the push to hear the sound. <laughs> see, you not only get the aardvark burping, but also the screams of the ants. Parents are gonna. They still love you, don't they, Steve? Oh, ab ab absolutely. <laughs> B is for butterfly, burps in the grass. <laughs> so, you know, so it's, it's, it's good educational value for the entire family. I uh, love it. There, there is a Barney-ish message at the end of that that, uh, that reminds kids to say, excuse me, when you burp. Everybody does it, but excuse me. So there's a little, a little lesson in there. There you go. Uh, another one I did uh, not, not that long ago. Thumbpire. This is the. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where I should be looking. No, that's with okay. It. Well, yeah. yeah. We'll just describe. It's Thumbpire. We'll, we'll okay. Thumbpire is, and it's about blue about people. Blue people. Well, they're technically they're they're vampires. Oh. And the okay. story is is about the, the little vampire here whose whose fangs haven't come in. Turns out they won't as long as he sucks his thumb. So so basically every every kind of monster, werewolf, mummy, whatever, they 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 all try to help him stop sucking his thumb, and. Oh Spoil spoiler alert! Don't tell anybody. <laughs> but uh, but in the end, it's it's none of those monsters that really help him break the habit, but rather his grandmother sends him a uh, finger paint set, and he be um. he becomes so fascinated with finger painting that uh, uh, he forgets to put the thumb in the mouth, and it ends happily ever after. He grows his fangs, and and then there's a reign of terror. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I I don't think there's a reign of terror. No. But, uh, but but and and this I should point I should point out was co-written with my daughter oh, who was just oh great. how wonderful she was just the little the little smidgen when i started on barney and now she's a, oh. a speech language pathologist who specializes in working with kids and she co-wrote this this book with me oh, and that's uh, great. and so it, that's that's just a fun generational thing do you know what every single show that we have done carrie mm -hmm. everyone takes something from their barney years with them in their their next life yeah. so to speak and fans do the same thing we've yeah. had fans write in that say well i'm a filmmaker now because i used to watch yep. all yeah. the barney show so it's 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 just something to really kind of to think about
Oh, it is. It's incredible. And I, I told you this too, that I was going on this journey with you uh-huh. as we do this each week. And I've heard so much that I had no idea. I definitely didn't know about the belching. <laughs> And well, and then Jurassic. The, oh wait, you. we got wait, 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 wait. Oh, the Jurassic. I mean, because you're still doing dinosaur stuff, right? Well, I hadn't for the longest time, but this was a very recent project, and it's it's ongoing. Uh, Bob Singleton, who was uh, one of one of the uh, the music guys on the show, did yes. a lot of songs. He would record the the kids singing and and so on. Uh, he and I got together to to create a concert experience for kids so that they could learn the uh, be introduced to the sounds of the symphony. Uh, it's, it's like Peter Wool- Peter and the Wolf is, is great. Mm-hmm. Right. It's been done so much. Let's, let's do something for them that's new, that's funny. Uh, so uh, I, wrote, I wrote a script for it. We, mm-hmm. we use a narrator, uh, and, and then Bob did the music. And so we tell the story of uh, that, that all the orchestra instruments used to be dinosaurs. They're all descended from dinosaurs. Like the uh, the Stradivarius Rex, I'm sure you've heard of. Of course. Or the uh, the Harp Pack, which was the the, the pluckiest of the dinosaurs. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and, and and more more of the same there. But we just we just performed this uh, a few weeks ago with the Fort Worth Symphony Orchestra at Bass Hall, and uh, Patty Wirtz, who was the voice of, of BJ on the and show, will be here in a couple weeks. Was, Excellent. Was was our narrator, oh. uh, Professor Pat Pending. Yeah, just and, love uh, Patty. And so, oh, uh, she's and, amazing. And it was such great. Fun Fun, though so so th- there's nothing really barneyish about this except the way it was designed to connect with kids right. to be fun to have a little edu but but i got to work with bob and and, and patty and it, so it was a little bit of a feeling like yeah we're getting the band back <laughs> everybody wants to get the band yeah. back oh. together and that's something carrie is working Absolutely. on right yeah. and we've got some great people coming Oops. up and unbelievable okay and i'll tell you what will you come back i, I would love to because I, I think you have more story. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I think what we want to do is just to remind everybody, be sure to go to purpletalespodcast.com. Look for us on YouTube. Any, anywhere you get your podcasts and your, your videos and so on. And I think um, I think we should call this one a wrap. What do you think? Yeah, and, and uh, Nancy, next week we're going to teach you some dancing moves. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Okay. Promise? Yes. You think he's going to be good to his word? Oh, abs- okay. absolutely. Okay. He may make it's your a- roller skate. <laughs> oh, as long as there's no bucket and broom involved. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I- I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Oh, this has been great. Oh, Thanks been so great. much, it's Steve. It's been great fun to be Thank here. Thank you. Wow.